Hey everybody, John O'Connor here again, and today we're going to be doing another viewer request. Today's request came from Dungeon Master Brad, who asked me to build a better Hamlet. So, Brad, let me be the first one to tell you that this was an extremely hard challenge. I didn't think it was going to take me a week of researching, uh, compiling notes, writing out the script, rewriting out the script, and editing myself down to this. So, thank you for the challenge, and uh... I will be a little more leery the next time I ask you for an idea, man. So, first step of doing this video was determining what a Hamlet is. It's a very broad term. So, I've compiled three definitions, and I'm going to be using these as a rough guideline to determine how to move forward with building it better. First, Merriam-Webster's dictionary says that a Hamlet is a small village. Not very much to go on there. Uh, it also tells me that the origin of it is Middle English, Anglo-French, Hamlet, a derivative of Ham Village of Germanic origin. Its first known use was in the 12th century, so that's okay, well that tells me a little bit about it. Wikipedia claims that a hamlet is a type of settlement of a, in a royal area, rural area, or a component of a larger settlement or municipality. So, Wikipedia tells me that it's role in nature. Good to know. The last and least useful definition of a Hamlet comes from the Dungeon Master's Guide 3.5, which just states a Hamlet is a small settlement with a population anywhere from 81 to 400 persons. That's it. So, that's what I had to go off on making it better. So step one of determining how to make my hamlet better was geography. Well, Wikipedia told me it was a rural area. What's the definition of rural? Rural is associated with the idea of open areas with few buildings or people. So, good to know. So now I've kind of got the idea in the field. Okay, I'm looking at grasslands, maybe plains. Okay, I'm starting to get an idea, you know. Not as many buildings as a large city or a more developed town. I can work with this. I can. Next step. Economy. Well, if there's not a lot of buildings and people are kind of scattered out, the backbone of the economy has to be farming and ranching. So, there needs to be at least, at least, 6 to 20 families in the surrounding areas whose only source of income comes from some form of ranching, farming, or a combination of both. Their, their livelihood is determined by the seasons and the health of their livestock. These will be individuals that the player characters can meet and you, the GM, have to decide is it a good season, is it a bad season, did we have a good season? Did we have a bad season? This will really determine the temperament of these particular characters. Furthermore, on the fringe of the hamlet, you need to have somewhere anywhere between 8 to 30 households, depending on how large your hamlet is, that all sit on about 1 or 2 acres, and these households will indulge in subsistence farming. The idea behind this is that they're cutting some of their monthly cost of living by doing some of the work themselves. They grow a vegetable or they have an animal. If they have an animal, they're, they slaughter at an appropriate time, cure the meat so they can save it, or if it's vegetables they have because they're farmers, they're pickling them. These are things to consider. These people don't have much, but what they do have, they want to preserve and keep for as long as they can. They're very frugal. It's a hamlet. Money exchanges hands far less than if this was a town or a metropolitan metropolis, sorry. Also, so now we kind of covered the backbone, which is farming and ranching. You know, you've got the big boys and the little boys. What do you need next? Well, you've got your sources of income from, you know, this, but what else is there in the city? You're going to need a pub or tavern. Now, why do I put pub or tavern when they're really synonymous with one another? Here's the difference. A pub doesn't serve as an inn. A tavern does. They both serve food, however, and they both serve alcohol. So, 
you got to determine right from the beginning is it a pub or is it a tavern and if it's a pub there needs to be an inn it goes to the next one if it's an inn you know you need to tell me who runs it do they have any children how old are they what's their temperament is the inn intended for farmers who came in from the fringes and the outskirts of the hamlet to sell their vegetables or livestock and just need to stay in town for a night because it's too much work to go home or is it a tourist destination so they're normally booked during the good season spring autumn things to determine next the barber why do you need a barber well not every single male is comfortable with shaving his own face trimming his own hair uh, same can be said for any married man they don't feel comfortable allowing their wife or themselves to take a straight edge to their throat kind of if you kind of nick it here there's going to be blood everywhere so not everybody feels comfortable about doing that next a tailor why do you need a tailor well although we have a general store which I'll get to later a general store will sell you cloths and maybe work shirts a tailor on the other hand can fix things oh your pants tore and you live by yourself let me sew those up for you oh you have a baby and your wife doesn't know how to sew let me get you some appropriate clothes a tailor is another one of those little niche things that again these all the stores I'm listing aren't in competition with themselves they're just aspects that one or one or another store doesn't completely cover and if you don't have the skills or talent to do it yourself you need a place where you can go that's why the tailors here same thing with the blacksmith not every farmer can make horseshoes not every farmer knows how to repair things sometimes they have to bring it into the blacksmith now this blacksmith isn't really as you would know in other villages and towns a weaponsmith of any sort they make very mundane things they make tools they make horseshoes they help with saddles this blacksmith would also kind of have a background in leather work as well he's not a weaponsmith or an armorsmith of any sort though he might have been in a past life and he moved to the hamlet that's an interesting way to take the story but for the bare bones of making this a better hamlet this blacksmith doesn't do weapons next butcher not every farmer knows how to clean an animal that's why they sell it to the butcher so they sell it to the butcher the butcher cleans the animal prepares the animal cures the animal then sells it back to the general general public now you have money flowing you have this economy going a healer you gotta have a healer now this could be a low-level cleric a mid-level adept uh, maybe just a ranger who actually has some small amount of medical skills uh, an apothecary just somebody who knows how to handle a boar cut uh, a horse kicking someone in the sternum their job is to is to handle the nicks and scrapes and small poisons that come from living in a rural community it's not their job to heal sword wounds arrows not really their niche this again you're building a hamlet it's a small village so that you got to think of small village problems that they'd be solving cobbler a lot of people don't think about the cobbler but most people wouldn't have the skills to make their own shoes I know that's something that you know you don't think about a lot in D&D &D and Pathfinder and other role-playing systems but there would be a cobbler and especially if you're playing a sneaky campaign with a lot of rogues or a lot of people who like to investigate more so than hack and slash sometimes the clue can be found with the cobbler you can ask the cobbler questions if someone's stealing cattle if someone's robbing farms well how many shoes have you made to these parameters interesting way to always take a campaign uh, next a kitchen now notice I didn't say restaurant uh, a kitchen is one of those things that 
they may serve, they'll serve lunch, and it's a toss-up. Either they serve breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner. They normally don't serve all three meals, and the idea behind a kitchen is there is no menu. There is no choice. Uh, for the most part, there's no alcoholic beverage. It's just a meal. You pay one or two coppers. You get your serving. You sit down. You eat it. You bring the plate back. And that's it. Nothing fancy. Nothing unique. But again, this the kitchen could have bought their meat from the butcher. So again, you're spreading this economy around. The farmer sold to the butcher. The butcher cured the meat. The cured meat's now sold to the kitchen. You're keeping this money going. You keeping, you know, you start building these relationships. Everybody knows everybody. It's a small community. General store. Now, the general store is not going to have any weapons. It's not going to have a lot of adventuring gear. It's going to have the mundane, mundane items you need to survive. You'll find rope, hemp, not silk, bullseye lanterns, flint, steel, uh, very few alchemic items. Maybe if someone ordered one. But that's the idea of the general store, is that they sell the basics that you need to survive. But you can, if you live in the hamlet, ask and go to them, hey, could you procure this or that? The general store is one of the few locations that would probably send out parcels, who send out carrier pigeons. They, if you have a postal service in your setting, most people would go to the general store to get their mail. There wouldn't be a separate building for it. It's just a function that the general store could serve as. Since people would be bringing shipments of cured nuts or fish, whatever your community can't get, you'd pick it up at the general store, along with your mail. Last, a church. Now, it's a small community. It's only going to be one church. And odds are, it's, if it is of a very stringent deity, the followers here are very lax. For the most part, you should choose a deity that has a broad appeal and has something to do with nature, agriculture, society. One of those portfolios would really help you out. Because the idea here is that this god is there to watch over this community and take care of them. And although the church probably has a larger branch somewhere that sends them a yearly budget, they're just as much as part of this community as anyone else. That yearly budget they have to spend to get their own goods from the general store, the butcher, if their shoes wear out, they can't go to the church and go, oh, when we need new shoes, they have to use the cobbler. So again, this is another source of outside money coming into the town, and again, that money gets spread around. But this is the mechanics. These are things you need to think about. But what makes this better? Well, think about your government. Does that church have a heavy influence? Is there an elected mayor? Is there an appointed marshal? Or is there a city council? Any of these choices are completely acceptable, but stick with one. Now the only one of these that maybe can work with the other one is the marshal. The marshal could be a defective, de facto sheriff who is a peacekeeper. But for the most part, you only need one of these. There is no competing philosophies, there's no competing authority figures unless a position in the town hall's up or it's time to elect a new mayor. These conflicts should be rather minor. They shouldn't be plot devices so much unless you're playing a very low level campaign. They should be the news of the set this should be the news of the town. Things to keep in mind. Now, here's where it gets fun. The flavor. Ooh, you gotta love the flavor. Big question. Huge question for your Hamlet. How do you treat outsiders? Is this a tourist destination like I asked before? Do they welcome them in? Or is this more of a exclusive community where they keep to themselves? They don't like to be bothered by such things. You know, when your when your adventurers come into the city or sorry, the hamlet, how are they treated? Do is there a general welcomeness? Is there a feeling of, well, I'm glad to be here? Or is it a fake facade 
just so maybe the adventurers spend some of their money. Is this hamlet known as a tourist destination, but when you get there, it's really mine, 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 where all the prices are exorbitant just because you're an outsider. Things to consider. The history of the hamlet. Now, why is this more flavor than its own little segment? Because unless your adventurers are starting here, the history of the hamlet really doesn't play a factor unless they want to sit down and hear someone talk about the history. So you should have a couple paragraphs, some interesting events that have happened in the past, maybe how it was founded, how they survived, uh, any interesting event that's happened in the last 20 years. This should be not the focal point. You shouldn't be trying to force this information down somebody's throat. But if the adventurers ask a question, you should have a couple answers ready to go. Now the biggest part of the Hamlet. This is the part that is the easiest to screw up. You need to have gossip, not rumors. Now I know what you're thinking. What's the difference? It's in the delivery and the attitude. Let me give you an example here. Say you have a marshal who's been running the city pretty successfully for the last five years. And he's married to one of the most beautiful women in town. But it's all for show. He's really gay. Well, if it's presented in the form of a rumor, it sounds like this. You didn't hear it from me, but there's whispers that the marshal is really a dandy. Shh. That's a rumor. It's malicious. It's not, it's not, the news doesn't seem personal. You don't know if the person who told you is lying about it, if it's a truth. It's just a quiet whisper in the tavern while everybody's had a couple too many pints. But gossip, gossip, gossip has a little more flair, a little more exposition. I heard from Lauren, who heard from Amy, who's friends with the marshal's mother that um, he hasn't been performing his husbandly duties. He spends too many nights with the barber's son, if you get what I'm saying. See there? Although it may sound just as malicious as the first one, it was more personal. I heard from so-and-so, they heard from so-and-so. You can see there's a direct line. So if the adventurers wanted to follow up on it, there's already a path laid out for them. Also, it's long-winded. It's not just, here's a fact, let's move on. This is somebody who wants to talk, who wants to gossip, that wants to see your reaction when you say it. They're not passing this information along to discredit the marshal. They're passing it along because it's a source of entertainment. So, these are things to think about. These are the things that are going to make your Hamlet better than anybody else's Hamlet. So, let's go over them again. Geogra geography. Pick some are rural. Have a couple of things that pop out out of the grassland or plains that you choose that are visual aids for you to see and go, oh, from a distance, this is what I noticed before I come into town. The economy. Farming and ranching. Now you can have a couple other businesses, legitimate or illegitimate, to add a little more flavor. But remember, this place exists because there are people breaking their backs every day and toiling the soil or herding the cattle. That's why this, this is why this particular settlement exists. Not to trade gold, not to deal in silver, because they're making the food that you're going to eat. Government. Big important government. You need to think about. Is it the town hall where a few selected individuals of the town come together and they make all the decisions for everyone? Is there a marshal? Is it kind of a pseudo-military feel? Maybe somebody who was deposed and aside from being shunned, this is a soft retirement for them? Is there an elected mayor? Someone that everybody trusts and every so many years he has to re-elect himself? He has to get back? Or is it a faith-based strong community where everybody does the best they can in the name of the deity they all mutually respect. Lastly, flavor. How do you treat the outsiders? What significant events have happened here? Gossip, gossip, 
gossip. And if you got these tips, and you're working them all down, you've been taking your notes like I hope you were, you'll find out this makes for a far better Hamlet than you've played before. Brad, I want to thank you for the request. I hope this answers it, and I hope I met your requirement. And for everybody else watching, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I thank you for watching, guys.